you're about to see is based on an actual experience. Explain it? Oh, I wouldn't even try. But I do think you'd be interested in exploring with me that strange world that lies behind the veil. You know, it's a curious thing, but it often happens. When a young man is trying to decide what his life's work is going to be, it's sometimes a sensitive time for both father and son. Our story takes place in Europe, where Peter Wade has established a thriving air service. This might not be your first time up, but you're over controlling. I'm gonna check the cargo. I'll check it. No, you keep a heading on 145. Don't drift around to the north. Those ridges come up at you awful fast. Oh, now don't you start to. you know the whole story. Now, boy, it's no good bottling these things up. You know that. There is nothing to bottle up. I'm trying very hard to understand, very hard indeed. Well, don't try, because you can't understand. You're not the type. You're the guy that doesn't quit until he wins. Oh, no. Not until I win. Until I've earned the right to go on to the next thing. It's just as simple as that. I've got to use my talent, not yours. Just tell me one thing. Why did you deliberately head for a crash? I can't explain that. Even if I could, you wouldn't understand it. Are you sick? Is he? Or just plain scared? Yeah, I'm... some people... Well, some people are good at one thing and bad at another. I'm a washout as a flyer. And I probably can't run this company. But I can design planes. How do you know? Because I've got the talent, and you know it. And furthermore, I've got the desire. Two more years of graduate school, I'll have my degree. Now, this is something that I can do.
What's that for? Tuition, books, board, room, and works. And if and when you feel you've really earned the right to go to graduate school, it'll be right there. Dad, I'm just trying to face facts about myself. Now, is that being a quitter? Only you can answer that. But let me tell you one thing. Doubt in any area is malignant. It grows. It can destroy anything you do. Take the first plane to New York. Pete. Dad, I'm sorry. There's a lot of other things involved. Something I just can't explain. What? No, no. No. I can't do that. No, I can't. Wally, Wally, Wally. They're hit, I tell you. They're hit. They're out. Jump. Jump, everybody's up. No, you can't go to the Jess here. Grenoble. Jump. No. Oh, that shoot, you can't. You can't. Shot full of holes, no good. Wally. Oh, what? No, no, Dad, no, don't die. Dad. Dad. Oh. You all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Just a dream, that's all. What was it this time? Oh, nothing, nothing. Why are you still up? Dad, who's Wally? Who? Yeah, you were calling out his name. I was? Yeah, who was he? I don't know. Dad! Wally died in that crash, didn't he? Yes, of course he died. But we have to talk about it now. It's the middle of the night. No, of course not. Good night, Dad. Good night, boy. A very good example, was it? Only this afternoon I told you not to bottle things up. Well, uh, you wanted to know about Wally Huffner. The jelly fighters hit us. I ordered everybody out. Where was that, over Grenoble? No, further north, near Lyon. I went back to the waist to jump, and Wally was there. What a useless shoot. So I gave him mine. And he took it? Well, I told him that I could ride the plane down safely, which, of course, I did. This was after Wally jumped? Yeah, after Wally jumped. Uh, Watched him fall. The chute didn't open. No wonder you have nightmares. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. Dan, what kind of a guy was he? What did he look like? Plain, ordinary looking. There was something about him that why all this interest in Wally Huffner? Oh, it's nothing. It's you, these nightmares. Maybe you need a rest or something. Oh, no, I'll be all right. Still going to New York in the morning? Oh, I don't know, Dan. You want to talk about it? Let's talk about it in the morning. Huh? Good night. Good night, Dan.
What now? Well, let's see. We were on a heading of about 145, weren't we? Yeah, something like that. Okay, I'll take over. Please, Bill. All right. anything? Nothing. Well, I guess I'm wrong. It's not the same now. Huh? You might as well go on home, huh? Get some coffee, Bill. It's in the back. Go on, I'll be all right. RLC's Appalach Grenoble. RLC's Appalach Grenoble. Castrujans, Javis Swan to helicopter. Castrujans!
I've been worried to death ever since Bill came back and told me what you did. I know, I'm sorry. Yesterday was bad enough. But this last thing, bailing out of the mountains like that. Do you want to know why? The reason I headed for that mountain? The reason I bailed out? I saw something in the plane. A reflection in the windshield. A reflection of a man's face. What do you mean? This face. That's right, Wally Huffner. And I heard his voice. It was hypnotic. It made me do what I did. Oh, I don't believe me. But it made me take a heading of 135. Oh, Pete, for the love of Oh, wait a minute, let me finish. He made me bail out. And I found something. The wreck of a B-17 with one of these on it. And inside I found this. Parachute. Yeah, a parachute. With a serial number on it. 01636184. Do I have to tell you whose shoot this is? No, of course not. It's yours. Here, look at it. Look at the holes, four, five, six of them. Bullet holes. Now, you don't understand. You see, you told me that you were in that plane alone. Everybody else had bailed out. Dad. A man died in that crash. Carlo Manzetti. No. Carlo Manzetti was Wally. Wally Huffner? Carlo Manzetti was his cover identity. He was an intelligence agent? Yeah. We were supposed to drop him near Torino and up in... But it's incredible. How did you find that ship? I told you that. The point is this. You told me that you brought that ship down safely. Now, you couldn't have, not in that little valley. I know. I know. Don't you see? All these things just don't add up to what you told me last night. Last night, I was trying to protect you. Protect me? From further reasons for doubting yourself. My own uncertainties. What have your uncertainties got to do with me? You think that I took Wally's parachute, saved my own neck at the expense of his life. Well, it's true. You took somebody's parachute. Yes, it was Wally's. Ship had been hit and he was badly hurt. But not dead? No. I killed him. You what? We were over enemy territory. He had orders not to be taken by the Wehrmacht and in his breast pocket, he had a capsule. He insisted that I give it to him. And you did? The plane was losing altitude. We were drifting in fast over those mountains. There was very little time to think. Oh, I had so many doubts and uncertainties. I even filed a false report with the OSS, saying it had been hit by flak. What do you mean, doubts? Maybe I should have tried harder to get Wally out of that plane. But you said that he insisted on that capsule. Yes, but why? Was he really afraid of recapture? Or was he sacrificing himself for me? He was capable of that. Dad, that Italian parachute that they gave Wally, that would only hold one person, right? Yes, and he should have had it. But he couldn't even have pulled the ring. 
Not wounded the way he was. Dad, I think Wally may have helped us both. I'll leave this check here. At least for now. I may earn the right to use it sooner than you think. As far as Pete Wade Jr. is concerned, there's no question about the apparition of Wally Hafner. He saw it. It happened. How it happened? No man can tell. I mean, of course, no living man. Won't you join me again for another journey into that unknown world that lies behind the veil? Mm -hmm.